I'm Jason Waller here with the BAM Podcast. That's right, business and money podcast. You want to make money? You want to conquer business? You want to go ahead and get that mindset right to take you to the next level and level up? You got to listen to the show. We're going to have all kinds of guests on there, billionaires, millionaires, athletes, actors, you name it. We're going to have them on here. They're going to be talking about their success, their struggles, their life, their hardship. I'm going to talk about my success, my struggle, my life, my hardship. So tune in. BAM! I'm Jason Waller here with the BAM Podcast. That's right. Business, attitude, money, badass motherfuckers. That's what I like to say. We are the BAM Podcast. We are here turning and burning, baby, getting things to the next level, overcoming adversity, talking about having a buffalo mindset, not a cow mindset, talking about being a lion, not a sheep like my boy Sean Whalen talks about. We are setting the standard. Thank you again to all the listeners out there making us a top five podcast for business entrepreneurship, and motivation. Thank you so much. Now, today's show, we're going to talk about the power of perseverance. That's right. It's a big fucking word for me, for you guys out there to know. That's a big word, baby. I love perseverance. Like, it's an important word. And it's a big word to spell, and I spelt it right on the, on the here on the, on, on, the, uh, on the show. But I'm super excited to talk about, you know, the importance of actually winning, not quitting, right? And charging through life's obstacles. And I... I think about this all the time. Like we're getting ready to, to face um, some games here this weekend and flag football, right? And to a touch, whatever with the, with the helmets, it's a competitive seven v seven football. And uh, we're playing a team that we've lost to twice this year. We lost fourteen to thirteen. Should have beat them. Started a fight. I talked about it in a previous episode where I lost it. Coach lost it. The other coach lost it. That mom got in our kids' face. Like it was just bad. There were going to be fights. So it was bad. <laughs> Second game, the commissioner and the refs, when we played them a second time last week, said, if anybody says anything or does anything inappropriate, you know, anything, you're gone, right? Game's over. So we kept our cool. Um, Christian got stitches that morning. And um, for the listeners out there, I don't know Christian's my son, and he plays quarterback. So he got stitches that morning. And the problem with that was he was hurting. His leg was wrapped. He probably shouldn't have been playing. He still played. Uh, He threw five touchdowns to a pick six. It kind of hurt. But we didn't have a scoring problem. I told you we lost to them a few weeks ago, 14-13. We lost this game Mm 46-36. We gave up so many points. Defense wasn't there. He wasn't on defense, which hurt because his knee's all fucked up. We were missing two other kids. So it was frustrating. Needless to say, it was very, very frustrating. And... I believe we're going to have to be a better team uh, when we play them again because we play them, see here, tomorrow coming up, uh, we play a team that we beat 58-14 to get into the championship, then we'll play them. And um, Christian's a week into his his injury, so he's got his knee wrapped. And um, that's an obstacle we're going to have to charge through. Right, that's an obstacle of his knee. I also got two kids not coming. Grayson's not coming, and another kid Aiden's not coming. So I've got you know a different Aiden playing, uh, but we're missing we're missing some bodies, and you know we're not going to quit. We're, we're gonna we're gonna try to win. Right, it, it doesn't matter. We lost the regular season games. We go in and beat their ass for the championship, and get the fucking trophy. That's what it's about. These kids fucking put in the work. They want to win, and that's one league we're in. We're in two leagues. But that's an obstacle we have to go through, right? I had to just, you know, I, we, we were talking about, you know, can we score on them? And so we made some different plays, and all of a sudden we were lighting them up. We scored every time. Like, we went down. We were up 18-6 before the, right before the half. They went and scored a touchdown, so it was 18-12 at the half. It was their ball after the half, the second half. They came down and tied it. Then we threw a pick six, right? So then they went up eight. Then we went down and scored. Then they went down and scored. Then they went and it just kept doing that. And then eventually they stopped us at the very end. And we gave a touchdown before then they ended up winning by 10. So what are we going to do different, right? How are we going to overcome that? Well, we know our offense can put up points we went from four, 13 points to 36 points. Our defense got to stop them. So we're going to change who's playing on man. We're going to change who's back in zone. We're going to back off about four yards, let them do their little thing. We're going to bend and not break. We're going to strategize. The coaches are making game improvements. I will keep everybody updated, not that you really give a shit, but maybe you do, of what happens in that game. But we're going to try to win the fucking game. 
Okay, because I I want to I want to fucking win the game. Don't like those guys. Don't like the coach. Want to win the fucking game. Now let's go to the other season, the other league. We're in another league called BAYA, which is like Brawley Youth, whatever. That league, uh, there's a team out there that Christian played tackle football with where we wanted to get some of those kids together, but the parents are egotistical pricks. They want to coach their own team. One of them wanted his son as a quarterback, blah, 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 blah. So they're going against us. Basically, the championship team he was on last year is all of them against us. Our kids that I brought, like five or six of them, plus all the fifth graders versus all their sixth graders, studs, right? They have dominated all year. We have dominated all year. I think there's a three-point differential between our us and our games and them and their games. So, you know, we're the number one seed, they're number one two, or they're number one, we're number two, it doesn't matter. We're facing off this weekend. Um, the winner gets an easy game to play in the championship next week. So you'll play an easy game and then get in. The loser plays the Lightning, who we beat 37-25, and they beat 25-24. So we want to send them to play the Lightning and play the winner of that. But this is a big arch, arch you know, uh, our tribal game for us. Like this is this is a rivalry because Christian was on that team. I know the coaches. There's some animosity there. Christian doesn't like their quarterback. Like it's bad. So we're going in with a trick play. Like we're going to start the game with a trick play. Why? Because we're charging through obstacles, right? We're we're figuring out that you know. We have to take certain experience and certain knowledge and certain wisdom and add all that into being creative and trying to get what you want, which is winning, right? And to have a winning mindset, you can't be stuck in the same shit. And we haven't played this team yet, but you can't be stuck in the same shit. You got to be creative. So we're setting up something first play of the game, more than likely, where you're supposed to go out there with seven. And we're going to go out there with six, and we're going to have one kid kind of stand on the sidelines looking like he's talking to a coach. And we're going to go out there with six, and I'm going to put my arm around the ref and tell the ref what's going on so he doesn't fucking freak out. And then we're going to line up everybody on the other side of the ball, and they're going to be thinking, oh, my God, these guys are idiots. They're minus a player. And we're going to hike it and throw it to that other kid and go score a touchdown first play of the game. That is the fucking plan. I hope it happens. You heard it here. I'll talk about it. We'll see. But that's the plan. The rest of the game plan is normal game plan. Like, you know, we've got our best guys on their best guys. We've got stuff if they run zone. We've got stuff if they run man. I tell you all this because I'm trying to overcome any of the challenges. I'm missing a couple players, and I'm trying to find a way, uh, the power of, of, uh, you know, of perseverance, of, of trying to build a winning culture, and trying to win and not quit and charge through the obstacles. And that's what we're doing here is we're being creative and saying, Hey, we might be down some guys. We're going to get creative, try to punch them in the mouth when they're not ready. We're going to adjust our game plan. We're going to do all these things we need to do. Now it could be easy for us that, you know, we just don't care. We don't put in the effort, but I want to teach these kids that having a winning mindset is important. Giving it your all is important. Being creative is important. Putting all the work in is important. I also want to show them that we have resilience and we have resilience in the face of adversity. That when things are tough, like Christian injures his knee, or you know we're down two guys, what do we do about it? Do we lay down and just take the L? Do we walk away from it? What do we do? Those kinds of things don't even happen just on the football field, like with our kids, or the baseball field with our kids, or the basketball court with our kids. It happens to us too in work. It happens to us in relationships. It happens to us in our business, right? You know, I run into it all the time. Like, you know, we had a great month in, in sales of one thing, and then we have a shitty month. And then, you know, it's the same thing in, in the coaching business. Like, you know, I gain a couple people to get in the coach thing. I lose a couple people. You know, it's it's part of the deal. And the question is, what do you do? Do you quit? Do you run away from the problem? Do you get scared? Do you throw in your chips? Do you take your ball and go home? Do you fold your cards? I'm a big believer. I play life like poker, baby. I play like I got the fucking aces. I stay in and I'm all in on me. I'm all in on that. Now I get hung up. I get stuck just like you guys do. I get stuck thinking, challenging myself like, fuck, like, why is this taking so long? Am I doing this right? Look at this guy. He's doing this. And it gets you negative. Like, how do I, how, how's he so far ahead? How do I get there? What do I got to do? You just got to pace yourself, right? You just got to breathe. You got to know that if you're doing it the right way, you're doing it the right way. You got to know that if you're making an impact, you're making an impact. And that sometimes things move slow, but they're actually moving faster than you think. And I have to believe that. I have to believe that, look, 
might seem slow. I only got X amount of people I'm coaching, mentoring, and X amount of people in the BAM group, but it's starting to grow, and it's growing the right way. I'm selective of who I get to coach and work with. It's just not anybody and everybody, and it's making a difference in people's lives. The people I coach, I'm hearing good things from them. Their, their businesses are flourishing. You know, They're getting better at certain things. They are learning certain things. I'm learning more things as we go, more about AI, more about digital marketing, more about ROAS, more about how to use AI in business, things like that that make a difference, teaching them. And it's exciting. It's fun. It's, I don't know, it's, It feels good, right? It is, I can't explain it. It's fulfilling. It's just, if it's awesome, right? It's different than what it was just building a company, right? Because you're helping other people build their companies. It's exciting. And, uh, you know, I can't wait till I get back on stage soon and speak, line up some events because I'm going to freaking crush it. That's the plan. So, um, you know, go out there, get the get the people fired up, excited to get into whatever it is they're doing, whatever business they're in, whatever industry they're in, anything like that. I want to make sure that they're doing all the things they need to do. So getting back to, you know, having that mindset, changing, you know, having a winning mindset and being able to have resilience in the face of adversity. You know, in business, we struggle. And I was just talking about how I I run into that too. Maybe you as a business owner or a real estate agent or salon owner or, you know, brand new entrepreneur, maybe you're a high executive at a a company or or a leader at a company, Maybe you run into these, you know, these issues, right? What do you do with them? You know, too many times, especially in today's fucking world, people are just weak. They just quit early. They take their ball and go home. They find reasons to fail and not reasons to succeed. They make up excuses. I mean, it's fucking bad. And we've got to be better as a society, as a group, as Americans, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as visionaries, as leaders of this world for our children, to really lead by example of fucking a, you bring the fucking fire. I'm going to fight back, dude. I'm going to go overcome that shit. I'm going to, I'm going to be right in the face of adversity. I'm going to, I'm going to win. I'm going to have resilience. I'm going to overcome the challenges. And you know, cause tough times, they don't last tough people do. And I know that's cliche, but that's facts. Like tough times don't last. You're going through a battle right now to get to a blessing. So you've got to be able to find a way to channel that negativity, to channel that insecurity, to channel that fear, to channel that anxiety into fuel, to fucking do more, to work more, to be creative, to work smarter, to be knowledgeable, to self-improve yourself, to be the best version of yourself you can be to succeed. It is so important that that you're resilient and you have tenacity to push yourself through things because I'm telling you, your kids are watching. They're like fucking sponges. They're watching you. They're watching you make that decision. They're watching you not want that job. They're watching you not like that relationship. They're watching you take someone's shit. They're watching you not fucking pursue your dreams. They're watching you not fucking be all you can be. And that is wrong because they're going to follow those footsteps. And if you don't want your kids to follow those fucking footsteps, then you've got to fucking change your map. You've got to create your own destiny. You've got to start leading by example. You've got to show them that you're not fucking a loser. You're not a quitter. You're not a poser. You're a fucking winner that you go out there and you fucking win that you give it all that you're happy that you're fulfilled that you're not making excuses that you're not playing the fucking victim. You've got to show them that they need to see that. I might not be the best fucking dad in the world, but my fucking kids see me pursue my dreams. My fucking kids see me never quit. They see the fucking world comes tumbling down and every Tom, Dick, and Harry wants to fucking hate and kick and spit when my business, a billion dollar company closes and I lose 400 fucking million dollars and I get everybody fucking doing life threats and fucking hating on me and trying to cancel me over shit that was out of my control. And I got news for you. They saw me not fucking quit. They saw me bust my fucking ass day in and day out and fucking stand up on my own two feet and be able to build another business and be able to build other ways of to earn income and be able to make value in this world and help other entrepreneurs learn from my mistakes, learn from my failures, learn from my successes to better themselves. And therefore I'm getting fulfilled and they're seeing the fulfillment and they're seeing the excitement. They always scratch head like, dad, like, how do you do it? Like all these people are mean. They say, like, how do you do it? I do it because I fucking have that mindset. 
I do it because I don't have a fucking plan B. I do it because I want to show my kids that this world will not fucking win, that I will win, that I'm here to fucking win, that the world doesn't dictate this, that I'm a fucking buffalo, that when the storm comes, I fucking run through it. The storm gets worse. I fucking run harder. The storm starts throwing more shit at me. Man, I'm fucking growling and pinching and biting all the my fucking way through till I see sunshine. Like, that's how I am. The more you give me, the harder I fucking come. And that's the kind of mentality you have to fucking put in your brain. You have to be able to have that and believe it, know that you can fucking do it. I love a fucking challenge. I love when people tell me, you can't, you won't. Fuck you, I will. I'll fucking do it twice, motherfucker. Let me show you. That's who I am. Who are you? Are you that person who walks in there, puts your fucking head down, you shrug your shoulders, and you pout, and your kids look up, what's wrong, mom? What's wrong, dad? What's going on? Are you that fucking person? Are you that person you're in a relationship and your spouse is fucking abusive and hateful? You got your fucking head down and you're sad? You want your kids to see that shit? Do something about it. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? You don't get a redo. What are you doing? Stand up for yourself, not only in your relationship, in your fucking life. You know, I heard Ed Milet talk about one time that, you know, people always talk about, you know, abuse just being, you know, hitting kids and yelling at kids. He also mentioned that abuse is failing your kids, not showing your kids that how to be successful, telling your kids it's okay to not go get a fucking job. It's okay to not try. It's okay to, to not pursue your dreams. It's okay to not fucking put effort in. That's fucking abuse too. I agree with them. A thousand percent. That's just as bad, dude. You're cutting their fucking legs off. You're telling them it's okay. You know what I don't like about North Carolina? Most of you North Carolinians that listen to me are going to fucking be mad at me for this. I fucking hate this state, and here's why. Most people in this fucking state box themselves in with low-ass fucking goals. That's what it is. They don't give a fuck. They don't have high hopes and dreams. They don't want to pursue anything. They're lazy as fuck. They're good old redneck bumpkins. They set the fucking bar right here, and that's all. As I'm good with doing that, I'll be okay doing that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why is that okay and acceptable? Why is it okay to be fucking average? It's not okay for me to be fucking average. Why is it okay for you to be average? I have my kids being raised here and I get fucking nervous because I'm like, they think mediocre is okay because that's what's taught in this fucking school system here in North Carolina. That's what these fucking bumpkin rednecks fucking do. Everything's okay if I just do this. Like, really? Like, don't you want more? Don't you want to fuck? Don't you want to fucking take on the world and change? You know, fucking try to pursue Mars and 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 gather the moon on the way. Like, what the fuck is your deal? I'm okay if I get a job doing this and just chilling. Really? Like that's okay. Like you don't want to pursue. That's what you want to do your whole life. Or you wanted to fucking just do that your whole life. That's what you waited your whole fucking life to go to school, do whatever the fuck it is to get on your own and do that. That's what you wanted to do with your fucking life. That's what you settled for. That's it, huh? Like here, it's like normal. Like I fucking can't stand it. I told my wife, when we were in fucking Birmingham, Michigan. It was like, I was around billionaires, millionaires, athletes, celebrities. Like I was in the middle of the shit. I wasn't a billionaire. Like I was like in the middle, right? I had some money, but I didn't have as much money as some of those people, but I had more than some of the other people. And I like being in the middle because you got something to chase. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to want to get what you had, dog. I love that, right? Here. And I'm not saying I have more money than everyone here, but I can tell you I'm smarter than all these motherfuckers here. These motherfuckers are just like, you know, they're like fucking the, the guy who works at the donut place. They get up and do the same shit every day. And I'm like, I bang my head against the fucking wall. Like, dude, really? This is fucking what North Carolina's finest has to offer. Motherfucking hillbillies and rednecks and chicken shit motherfuckers scared to take a, take a, take a chance on life to fucking put an effort and fucking go balls to the wall to fucking pursue goals. I met a couple people at the gym. They're like, yeah, you, just, you know, I got a couple companies. Do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'm good with it. Get the fuck out of here. Are you serious? You're good with it? Is your fucking wife good with it? Let's see how long that lasts. How about your kids? Are they good with seeing daddy just being average? You want your kids, Johnny and Timmy, to fucking grow up and just be average? You, know, you just want them to be fucking normal? Because I want my kids to be fucking exceptional, right? I want them to be the best of the fucking best. Now, I don't know about you, but that's what I want for my fucking kids. What do you want for your kids? What do you want for your family? Because everything you fucking do and everything that you put in this, this planet and that your map of this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, you're showing your kids. 
that it's okay to be average. And look, I'm not taking away from those that are average. Maybe that's in your belly to be average and that's fine. But I'm talking to those who have the fire in their belly to do more but are chicken shit, are scared to take chances, living in fear, scared that if, well, if I double down on this, what if I lose here? Uh, well, at least you're doing something, you fuck stick. Are you going to sit there and just let shit do it itself? What are you going to fucking do? Like, you're not just going to fucking clap and fucking a money tree is going to land. Like, you have to get out and earn it. You got to be different. You got to solve someone's problem. You got to fucking make a difference. But you got to have goals and dreams and you got to pursue them. You can't fucking quit. You can't quit. It's unacceptable. I'm going to do a better job, too. I'm all fired up now. I'm going to fucking make sure my kids know, like, look, we're pursuing dreams, baby. That's what we're doing. They're like, Dad, when can we fly in private jets again? Soon, motherfucker, soon. That's the plan, soon. Rebuild time, baby. That's how we do. We don't, you can't fucking kill us. We fucking get up. We just fucking get bigger and better. Fucking, we built a billion-dollar company in eight years. Motherfucker, I'm going to build fucking two billion-dollar companies in five years. That's the fucking plan. That's the mentality you've got to have. You can't fucking lay down and fucking quit. You can't walk away from the fucking problem. You got to fucking, you got to stand up. You got one shot. You ain't fucking dead. You're breathing. You're listening to my ass yell at you. Motherfucker, you still got it in you to go do something. Do it then. The fuck you waiting for? Why you keep making excuses? Why are you trying to find every fucking reason to not be successful? Start looking for reasons to be successful, please. Start showing your kids that you can fucking do it. Quit fucking making excuses. Quit showing your kids to fucking live a fucking chicken shit life. Quit showing your kids it's okay to play the victim. Quit showing your kids the easy way out. Make it hard. Make them tough. Make them earn it. What the fuck are you doing? Ask yourself that. Look in the fucking mirror and be like, what am I doing? Like, why? Why am I showing my son or daughter that this is okay? It's not okay. If you want more for your kids, you need to want more for you. That's not fucking selfish. I'm going to say it again. If you want more for your kids, you need to have more for you. That is not selfish. That's showing them that mom or dad can go out and fucking conquer the world and get what they want as well. And so should little, you know, Jane and Timmy. They should be able to do what the fuck they want to do and grow up to be whoever they want to fucking be. But when you limit them, when you box them in by your chicken shit failures and scared to take chances... Dude, you're, you're limiting them to go their greatest potential because they think it's okay because mom and dad are this. It's okay that I'm this. How many people say, well, my dad was a CPA and I'm a CPA. And my mom was a nurse and I'm a nurse. And I'm not taking anything away from CPAs and nurses. So don't get it fucking twisted. But is that what you really wanted to be when you grew up? Like I've always just wanted to do taxes. That's what I wanted to do. Why aren't you pursuing your fucking dreams? And don't tell me it's too late. It's not too late. Are you breathing? It's not too late. Are you fucking inhaling oxygen? It's not too late. Is your heart fucking beating? It's not too late. You listening to me? It's not too fucking late. You can do it. And you can do it right now. Not one day, motherfucker. Day one. Make today day one that you do it. Make today day one that you actually take your bullshit goals and you make them fucking bigger. You fucking push the bar up. You fucking raise the roof up and you take it to the next level. Well, how do I get there, Jason? Easy. Set a 30, 60, 90, 180 day goal. Fucking, I always talk about it. You got to do that. You got to set your goals. You got to set your goals for 30, 60, 90, 180. That's what you got to do. It's not going to happen overnight. Sometimes it's like watching fucking paint dry. Sometimes it's fucking aggravating. Sometimes my ADD kicks in and I go, fuck. But then I go, you know what? Holy shit. Look how far I've come. Oh my gosh. This is great. I've got this. Like not a lot of people can grow up in an abusive relationship, live in a trailer park, not finish high school, have a kid in their teens, not have a pot to piss in, wear fake Tommy Hill figures, can have jobs at 18, 17, 19, 20, making over 100 grand a year when they're not supposed to have those jobs and be one of the best salespeople ever, build their own business at 24 worth over $15 million, build another business at 29, 30, to be over $30 million, build another business at 34 till he's 43 worth a billion dollars. Never went to fucking school. Now I'm not saying I'm better than anybody out there, but I'm saying I did all that. And if I can fucking do that, you can do all kinds of shit because I did that. 
And yeah, people are like, well, you lost your fucking company. You're damn right I did. I lost because of a product liability issue from those fuck sticks over in Wisconsin by the name of Generac. Absolutely, I did. But we had the best fucking reputation and the best fucking service and the best business model, and the best fucking customers and the best fucking employees until their shit corrupted everything and fucked everything up and systems weren't working and people were promised shit that weren't working because the systems weren't working and it became a shit storm and put us out of business. And what did I do? Cost me $400 million. What did I do? Did I hide in a hole? Nope. You motherfuckers are listening to me. Did I say I give up? Nope. You guys are listening to me. I mean, I even have my own kids like, dad, that's so crazy that that happened. And like, you know, all this that you've lost, it's like, you know, I tell my kids, it's going to be fun getting it all back, baby in different avenues and helping other people get it back. You know, my mission is to help so many people become millionaires and billionaires, help their business. That's exciting. And if they do that and they pay for my coaching, I'm going to do very well as well. And I've got businesses I'm involved in. And I'm involved in some of these businesses to help them take them to the next level. Like it's exciting. It's I have purpose. I'm fulfilled. I'm pursuing my dreams. I'm a fucking, you know, an entrepreneur coach, a motivator, a mentor, a fucking inspirational public speaker, a podcaster, an investor, fucking a teacher. Like, I love all this shit. This is great. But I didn't limit myself. I didn't box myself in. I didn't accept mediocre. I didn't accept average. I fucking demand excellence. I demand winning. I demand fucking success. And I'm going to push myself to make sure I fucking get it. That's what I'm going to do. Because I told you, tough times don't last, tough motherfuckers do. You know, you've got to find a way to fucking push through things. And, you know, you got to have a support system, like family, friends, mentors, something. Something that believes in you, because it's, it's hard as fuck to just believe in yourself. Like, it's hard. Like, when, the, when I, I found out, and to you motherfuckers out there, and you know who you are, that I thought were my friends, that when, you know, I don't have the money that I once had, and the business clothes, and the fame. And starting over, and I have certain people that are like not as reactive to talk. Yeah, you're a fucking, you're bitch mate, dude. I know who your real colors are. So when I get back to the top, don't come crawling, hanging on my fucking nuts, dude. Okay? You're not welcome near my nuts. You get to stay away. I'm, we're done. Just so you know. So there's motherfuckers out there. They know who they are. Uh-uh. Don't you even come swinging. Ain't happening. You keep your shit on the sideline. You ain't welcome to this party, motherfucker. I saw your true colors. I saw that when I didn't have much and things were hard, you weren't like, hey, Jay, how's it going? Is there anything I do? Can I help you? Hey, what do you got going on? da 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 Nah, you were like, oh, I ain't getting paid no more. I ain't involved in that. Fuck that. I'm out. Okay, that's fine. But, you, but listen, you're not, you're not invited to the second party, the after party, which is better than the first fucking party. And that's a fact. And that's what I tell myself. Like, I ain't, I ain't fucking with those motherfuckers. I have a good support system. I have my wife tell me everything's good. I have certain friends tell me everything's good. My kids, my family, my partners, like, I, they fucking like, dude, we got this. Keep each other motivated. Get yourself a good system. Practice gratitude. Thank you for everything you do. I said, I said, started the show thanking you guys for subscribing and following and building the show up and thanking people for their efforts in this business. I've grown so much with all the shit that I've been through that like I am practicing gratitude all the time, all the time. And listen, I want to tell you, you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. I had somebody text me today. He's like, I'm going through a lot of shit. I'm having a bad month, fight with the old lady, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, look, this will pass. This is all part of the ride, and sometimes the ride sucks, but it will pass. The ups and downs will pass. And if you stay persistent and resilient and you keep a positive mindset, then you can overcome all of the bad ride, all of the bumps, all of the issues. You can overcome it, but it starts here. It starts in your mind, and then you have to believe it, and you have to tell yourself affirmations that you can do it. And I'm telling you, you can do it. You can do anything it is you want to do because God gave you that capability to do it. You just got to believe in yourself and you got to put in the work. It's not going to come for free. It's not going to come for nothing. You got to put in the work, but you got to believe in yourself. Bam! Thank you for listening to the podcast. I hope you have a great day, great afternoon, great week. Make sure you follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Google Podcasts, 
Uh, we got the YouTube channel, Jason Waller Bam. You can check me out on Instagram, Jason Waller Bam, or Coach Jason Waller. Bam! Bam!